here we are on our farm in Big Flats, Texas. Today we are doing episode four of the series. We are working down on field 16 in the southeast corner of the Big Flats, Texas map. If you're not caught up to date with the series, there will be a link to the entire playlist in the description below. I'll go ahead and catch you guys up a little bit with what we're doing for those who have not seen the last episode. Uh, again, feel free to catch up to the series. So. As a quick recap, here's what we're doing. Beginning of episode four, we are down in the far southeast corner of the map on our latest purchase, field 16. We picked up this field earlier in the year and harvested oats. With the oats gone and the straw gone, we are now getting ready to repurpose the field, possibly for grass of a probable upcoming cattle farm purchase. We'll see about that. Fields 10 and fields one, I will show you here in a moment have soybeans planted on them from earlier this year, ready for October harvest this fall. Let's get this last row finished here. There we go. So I can pull up my map here. We are working down here in Big Flats, Texas. Throughout this episode, I will cover some of the things I may have missed you may want to know. Like for instance, I will speak out of character sometimes to address certain mods I may be running or certain things about the map. This is the map of Big Flats, Texas. It's a 1X map available on all systems. It is from my opinion, um, living in America and having seen all of the places I can, this place is the most authentic Northern Texas, big prairie farm feel I've seen in the map. And it's, it's a lightweight map. It's also very beautiful. Let's look here. We own three fields, field 16. Well, these numbers are not right. You know what I mean? Field 16, field 10 and field one fields one and 10 are already seeded with cor uh, sorry, with soybeans. They are fully fertilized, ready to go for this fall harvest. And right now we are just finishing up here. I'm preparing for some more purchases. We've saved some money from the harvest and some money from the straw. We'll be putting that to use, possibly doing some construction on the farm. There's definitely some things to come in this episode. And if we can get clear, I might be doing some contracting work as well to get some extra income because it looks like we have a lot of money, but when you have such big farmland as we have here, half a million dollars, can go in the blink of an eye. I, in fact, you know, among other things, I wouldn't mind adding another John Deere 9RX to the fleet, and that would, that alone is a six hundred thousand plus dollar setback. So, I approach every purchase we make here pretty carefully, as any purchase has definite ramifications on what, which direction we decide to do, and what we can do until next harvest. A uh, great feature of this map, I have mentioned in every episode, I try to mention the custom map features when I can. One great feature of this map is yeah, the, the stra destroyed uh, stalks from the harvest. Well, there's lots of small features on this map that are parts of the map. That's one of them, the custom, cop, uh, sorry, the custom crop calendar allows us to double crop, which is what we've been doing on the two fields over yonder. We had winter wheat over the winter, and then this spring, harvested the wheat and s uh, drilled in soybeans directly over the wheat stubble and now we have soybeans which we can harvest we'll harvest this fall and see where we go from there right now i believe we are good on lime for this field yeah so let's go ahead and let's get this down to the farm so throughout the course of the episode and this has been the norm throughout the series i will recap some things i'll try to keep the recaps a little bit short and far apart as those of you who've been watching along already know what we're doing but i'll keep the recaps here and there kind of to bring up things that may be relevant to what we're doing at the moment or things such as that right now we're just getting the limer back home and put away we won't need this limer for another year or two unless we pick up a new field so we can go ahead and get this limer this lime spreader I'm not going to top it off just yet because by the time it's ready to lime again, we'll likely be purchasing another lime spreader. We likely won't need this one ever again. Yeah, it's actually very possible. So for now, let's get it. I'm just thinking if I unload it, we'll see. For now, I'm going to get it cleaned up and put away. We might not need it again. Although if we buy that cattle farm up there, we might want to throw some lime on the pasture. Let's have a look at that. As long as the big bud's still working on the groundbreaking down in field 16, let's have a look at our prospective purchase up here. I've spoken so much about it, but I haven't checked it out myself yet. So here we have a grass pasture. 
I mentioned, oh yes, one thing about Big Flots, Texas. I mentioned this map has custom grass texture. I believe I mentioned in episode two or something, and I mentioned that it was awesome. It is. It is beautiful. So here we have, oh, I said maybe three hectares. I was a little bit off. It's about two hectares of beautiful grass. Yes, I love the grass textures here on in Big Flats, Texas. We got two acres of grass pasture here. Very beautiful. Let's see what else is up here. It's about $76,000 to buy this land. It has a cattle farm on it. Of course, nothing is here yet. So that's $76,000. That's an investment on... And we're going to have to sink a lot of money into new equipment, you know, over time. It, this is going to be an overtime thing. If we invest here, it's going to be over time because there is no equipment. There's no nothing here. But there's lots of room to expand our fleet of vehicles and things like that. So we got some silage bunkers over there, fermenting silos here. It opens up our options, though, as to a lot more things that we can get you done on this map. For now, let's get this lime spreader hauled back to our main farm, our grain farm. The purchase of this, let's just go ahead. How about I just buy it now? So that way I'm not constantly talking about it. It's something that we might do. Let's go ahead. Small hit of $76,000. We could buy that easily. All right. So that is now definitely something we're working on. All the, all the triggers lit up on it for everything. And I will get figured out how to work all of this. Yeah, that is to come. That looks like a lot to work with. But we got the farmland to support it. We'll, that gives us yet another thing we can decide to do with our money. You know, looking at the money, we're going to be looking at equipment for down there. I mean, for instance, you know, starting off, for instance, we don't even have a cattle trailer. <laughs> I don't even have a truck to pull said trailer that we don't have. So definitely some things to look at. No, not true. We got a semi truck. We got a semi tractor over here. A new range in equipment and things to look at. That's why we've already looked at, there's six bales left over from our straw harvest. We'll be constructing a building, probably in this episode, we'll be constructing another building here to store straw. So I'll be storing some of that straw that we saved over from the last straw harvest. And that building would look the best really right here where I have the grain header and auger and front loader parked here. This looks like it'd be a decent space for another such building. The ground is relatively flat there. And it's one thing I love about Big Flats, Texas. It is big and it's flat here. It's big, wide open prairie like you see in Northern Texas. But it's not perfectly flat. It's definitely not. It's got just enough terrain, just like in it is. Yeah, this is what it looks like. You, and you can see the horizon. I'm saying I mentioned that because it's flat enough here to build on. I'm just I was kind of eyeballing the terrain to make sure that it's not going to cause any big dips or anything. And if so, we can fix that and smooth it over. Let's head over. Let's get this equipment cleaned off. It's got all this lime washed off our equipment here. And I heard something. Is he done working down here? No, but he will be soon. So let's get this cleaned up and put away. Also look to be soon constructing a possibly a dirt road behind these bends here. I think I am going to keep these flat bottom bends. They're just, they are really great. There's no reason to change them up. For a while I thought I might be, but I really don't see that as necessary right now. They, they work just fine. Right now, these bends are the home to some... Okay, yeah, we got some more oats over there. And the semi-truck has some oats in it. So we're looking at some 56,000 in here. But there's a total of about 100,000 liters of oats. And then here we have about 350,000 liters of wheat. There's about another quarter million liters of wheat in the train depot waiting for export. This 350,000 is sitting here. We could we could haul this down there. There's still some room at the train depot to hold more or uh, the reason that this is still here, we could do something with it such as production or it could be made into feed. That farm we just bought it doesn't have to just be cattle. Let's see what's already built down there. Already built down here is room for that's undoubtedly a cattle farm. I mean, we could always put in room for pigs, sheep, but this right here is all set for cattle. 
all set for cattle down here and I'm looking forward to figuring out how this is going to work so we have a TMR silo that's really handy and wait why don't we just check here what we have with our newly purchased farmland so we have a TMR station which is great that's going to automate things for us really really well um, so you're going to want some more straw thinking about straw what can we plant in that field see we could plant we could plant wheat or something to get more straw yeah because our two fields that we have we're not going to get straw off of so maybe that field 16 that right now the big butt's working on maybe we could plant something there to get straw off of for the tmr i'm eh, just thinking about that and then so this is what our silos at our new newly purchased farm are going to put out for us all right a lot of stuff I mean, the possibilities here are absolutely endless. I'm just running through my mind all the different crops we could do and what we could do with them and such. So I'm going to be using these bins to keep, a, I'm going to start keeping, now that we have animals, or we will have animals to take care of, I'm going to keep some of these bins full of, well, with an amount of stuff in them extra for what we might want to use them for, if that makes any sense. I said it kind of weird, but yeah, let's, let's get this lime host off of our equipment here. The JCB tractor never gets put away. This is the most used tractor. Actually, it is in our fleet because it, even though this is a John Deere farm through and through, our JCB, because of its high top speed, has become our primary runner of equipment. Uh, usually, I wash equipment before I put it away for the season, but the JCB is always, always, always in use because it's always running equipment from one field to another. Man, this bumper is just packed with lime debris. There we go some more on the side here and let's wash down this we are probably retiring this guy unless our pasture we just purchased whoops well, let's check it anyway a pasture we just purchased probably needs no actually it's fine great well you know what we could do i know what we can do guys yes yeah, see i never know fully what we're gonna do there's things i want to do this episode this none of this is planned we are working on the farm and we just bought a big grass field why not we don't have a mower but we got what we need we can get us a mower and head over there and mow that grass and start working with some of that stuff to see what we have to work with get a feel for it let's put this lime spreader away we are done with it for now maybe forever because i'd like i'd like to purchase a bigger lime spreader for larger field work Okay, this is going down here. You know, do I really want to back it all the way there? Well, it's going just right here. Wait, which one? Oh, the far one. And that time, see, I told you, it's not just me. It did sink in the ground. See, it should be, yeah, it's standing up like it should be. I don't know what was up when I parked over by field 16 last time. I put the jack down and it sunk in the ground, no idea. This time it worked right. Ooh, wow, look at our shiny JCB. So, let's run this over. Done with everything, mostly for the day. Let's have a look. Let's check on the big bud. We're going to leave this equipment down here. I might want to clean up a little bit on this field. I want to end the day and start a new day in July. Let's clean up everything down here. Let's get the rest of this field tilled. The worker did a decent job. He got most everything that he could. I'll get the rest right here, right now. Let's get this. Let's have a look at the map and see. I don't have a roller. I have a knees rolling. I have that filter turned off because I don't have a roller right just yet. Okay, this last little bit is really it. We could hit, I want to hit a couple more patches just because this is actually, you know, we're actually creating the seed bed. And I do want to get any missed spots that we have. So, yeah, I don't mind missing a spot here or there with a limer or even planting. Really doesn't matter. But if I'm actually laying in a fresh seed bed, I'd like to actually get everything that we can. And it's not hard to swing down there. <laughs> that train scares me every time it comes by. If you recall in episode one, I was driving, I believe, uh, uh, yeah, I had the harvester. I was just getting ready to flip the harvester around, and I hear that roar come by, and I was like, what is that? Oh, it's the train, okay. 
And we're going to stop this row a little bit short, lest we knock over a street sign. So let's get this. Big equipment's great until you get into the corners on the fields, and then it gets a little bit trickier. In America, we generally have a lot of room to turn our equipment around, but the edges of our fields generally do go right to the road. Get all that space that we can. Let's circle around and get this. I just want to make sure we have a good solid seed bed throughout the field and not knock over that road sign if I can avoid it. Now let's head up over here. Now we know that the train's not coming. We can safely drive up there. So I'm going to tie this up here and this field will be good. We'll, we'll be good and we can go ahead and rest until later in July. See if there's new items for store for sale in the store. It's always one of my favorite things about you know, going to sleep, waiting to the next, you know, seeing what's on, you know, it's like, ooh, what's an offer in the store today? You know, it's always the fun part. Ignore the edge of the map, immersion breaking slightly, but it's actually not a bad edge to a map, if I'm being honest. If you're not right up on it, it kind of just looks like it continues forever. These are, you know, we're out in the plains of American West, Wild West down in America. And it's just not realistic to have trees or anything blocking the edge of the map. You would, in reality, this is what you see. So they've actually done a really good job. Let's get this last little bit right here. And I'm gonna leave the big bud out here right now as we are not doing anything with the big bud until a while, uh, really. We don't need it for anything just now. We were last with the JCB. Let's go ahead and let's end the day and head into the second day in July and see what awaits us. Lots of things we can do for sure. In fact, there's so many things I was talking about that I want to do and I can't remember all of it just right now. Let's go in here and... All right, welcome to the second day of July. Of course, since we we're doing three day months, this is effectively like the 10th of July, I suppose. I wanted to see, first and foremost, before I forget, contract work available. Is it still the same contract as last time? Yes, it's still there. $80,000 job cultivating field eight. We might pick up a cultivator in that job. Of course, the cultivator is going to set us back about $140,000. Now, I can use that cultivator they have provided for us there. Um, you know, it's actually a pretty decent size looking cultivator. That they're, yeah, I was thinking about buying our own because we could use it for us, our own farm. The one they're offering up for use, 14.3 meters, that's actually just about the biggest there is. All right, so I just thought that that could work for some extra income. Let's see if there's anything for sale at the store today that's interesting. No, nothing that we really need. I could use a wheel loader, but we're not on a budget or anything like that. I look at sale. I, I look at the sale items for th big ticket items that would potentially take a huge chunk. Well, one thing I thought could be interesting. Let's go ahead. We got the tractor right here. We got our, our equipment, equipment moving tractor right here. Let's clear some of this equipment and make room for what will be a big hay shed. Or, well, let's make room for it. Another possibility is we could construct a building here, like a, a proper hay loft. Or, would that be better to have at the cattle farm? You know what? that'd probably be actually more efficient to have at the cattle farm now that I'm thinking of it. And I think we have an issue here stepping out of character into this. Uh, this is general farming simulator stuff. These trailers like to move sometimes. Do we have a moving trailer on our hands? 
because um, I don't remember parking it in this orientation. Yes, the trailer is moving on us. Don't you just hate when that happens? Giant software, please. This is not a mod trailer. This is a regular trailer. This is an end game trailer. It's one of the items I have that's not a mod. And this trailer likes to move. I don't know what causes it. Maybe it's the map. Maybe it's something else. But this trailer, which is not a mod, moves. Because I parked it going that way. I parked it 90 degrees from here. I've seen it actually flip this header off before. Anyway, it's just something to watch out for. I hate that. But that's been a problem since... I started playing Farming Simulator with Farming Simulator 19 several years ago. And since then, I have put well over 6,000 hours into Farming Simulator. I have seen... I have pro I had problems with these things moving. It's usually these kinds of trailers with these kinds of hitches on the front. They like to move, especially when you leave them hitched up to a harvester. You'll come, and it'll be all jackknifed behind the harvester. I've seen it for years. I wish they'd fix it. Let's move on. All right. So lots of things that we can do right now. We can get started on some mowing. I don't have a mower. There's a couple. There should be... I mean, we're going to want a mower regardless, right? If we're looking at working with cattle, a mower is something we definitely need. And we already have a field of grass that could use a mowing. And that could be something great to work on right now. I would be interested in working on it. There should be a good John Deere mower in the store. I tried to make sure that we were stocked with John Deere stuff. And right here we have a good John Deere mower. So let's see what kind of options we would like. And I always, always put unique plates on my vehicles. Never forget to do that. All right. So let's buy this. And then let's get the header to go with it. What is the speed of this thing? 18 miles an hour. It's kind of wide. I don't really... Yeah, this is something you would drive down the road. And you see stuff like this going down the road here. Beautiful part about America. We have room to drive things like this down the road. It's kind of wide to put on a trailer. Um, yeah, we got the farm market roads that we can drive this down. Let's find a header for it. Here's the header that goes with it. Yeah, just go with the original... There we go. And how wide is this? 4.5 meters. That's fine. We got a two hectare grass field, which this will be fine for working on. So let's go to the store and grab that. There. Just take a drive down to the store. As long as we're right here by the truck. I don't like teleporting, as it were, so we'll just drive down there. Man, that stupid header trailer drifting around. It was staying put where it was. To, for the record, I mentioned this thing of those header trailers drifting around. They do. For the record, when that was parked over by the other side of the machine shed, it was parked there for a while, and it was fine. But ever since I parked it in the front yard, now it's decided it wants to, yeah, move around on me. Oh, now that it's a new day, I should have a look at the weather forecast. I was just looking at the horizon there, and I was thinking, oh, yeah. I should have a look at that. Let's have a look at the weather forecast for today. So I know if there's any rain coming or anything so we can get off the fields for it. No, we are looking, look at that. We are looking at a perfectly sunny day in July. Excellent. Our fields are fully fertilized and growing little soybeans, as we can see here. Very nice. Let's get down to the store and pick up our mower and we can mow some grass for our soon to have cattle. I'm not sure when we'll get to the actual cattle, more equipment to buy and things like that. I mean, we're going to need, I'll see what kind of windrows this puts out. We may need windrower, we may need like rakes, things like that. I'm not sure. We'll see how this mower works. We're going to need equipment to move the grass in. Yeah, we are. Possibly another tractor. Yeah, whoops, I didn't, that didn't have, you didn't see that. There's definitely more equipment we're going to want to look into. Look at that. Our brand new used mower. Well, it's not used, but you know what I mean. Brand new old mower. Well, let's get our new mower down to our pasture. That drives quite nice. Whoa, it turns quite well too. I, that was my mistake. 
Of course, I mean, it's a mower. Of course it turns on a dime. Let's get this down to our pasture. This is definitely going to be slow going. So, well, luckily, well, so we'll keep this in that pasture. We're going to keep that pasture for grass so that we don't have to move this thing around anymore. So once we get it there, it's going to stay there by the cattle farm. We'll be able to leave this down there. On the way there, I can think about some of the equipment we might need. Let's see. Well, first I'll have to see what kind of wind rows it puts out. Let's have a look at how this mower operates. As long as we're right here, let's start, let's start near next to the farm and work away from it. First of all, so this is the new grass texture we have here. I like this grass. And yep, we need to watch where we drive. Just want to test that out real quick. The grass in Big Flats, Texas. I love it. It looks like big pasture grass, which is what it is. So let's get this started on a row here. And there we go. Get it fired up. Yeah, it puts out workable wind rows. So we'll just, of course, we could always use. That's true. It would save time to be able to huck that together and to. It's not a terribly large field as it is, though. Well. So we have this working. And the field is a little bit, well, I'll set this guy to work on it for us. I'll hire a worker to mow this for us. So we can have a look at, yeah, just a little strip of grass there. We can come by and, yeah, we just leave it. Grass grows so quick, we just leave it. So this would be a good amount of grass. Let's think about, <laughs> I need to think about some things that we want to do here. We're going to need a wagon. Got to budget the money correctly. I'm going to go ahead and take this contract. I think that's another $80,000 that we could really, really, really use. May as well use the equipment he provides that wouldn't tie up any of our equipment. There's no reason not to take that contract. It wouldn't tie up any of our equipment. It's good income. All right. So we got that. And should be equipment for us to use. So as it happens, I accidentally accept that contract without getting the equipment and I don't want to spend $100,000 on a cultivator, so I cancel the contract. It's my bad. So that job is going to be left undone. So it leaves us where, we're, where we are and there's contracts left. There's still decent paying contracts left, but not that one. Harvesting field 11. Let's have a look at that. Which field is that? What crop is it? Field 11. That was my oopsie. So we have barley. We could harvest barley on field 11. Sounds like fun to me. We can use our own equipment for that for sure. So yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Well, we're mowing grass there. Let's do some fun harvesting on field 11. This time, okay, we're not borrowing items. We definitely have everything we need here. We, I had to cancel the last one because I didn't have a cultivator. This we have. We can accept this. All right, field 11, which is... Okay, we're sitting right here. Oh, we're on the edge. I know where we're at. Well, let's go ahead and start hauling this stuff home, and let's grab stuff and harvest in field 11. We're harvesting oats, or was it barley? One of the two. It's barley, I believe. We have equipment for that, so we can bring the harvester back out. I thought it was retiring the harvester for the season, but it turns out we can use the harvester for this. Let's drive this sprayer back. We don't need it. Not until later. And across the road here. So we're gonna want to pull. So now we have the job. I believe this right here is field 11, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. This field right here. How big is that field? <laughs> it looks like a pretty big chunk of. Oh. We bit off quite a big chunk here 27 hectares. All right, so we got to pull out all the stops for this. We're pulling out all the stops for this. What are the details of the contract? We got to get on this. <laughs> details of the contract. Harvests and take the product 
to the gate. So I'm going to take the big field bin out there, which is empty, luckily. Our field bin's empty, ready to go. We're going to hold that out there with the 9RX, and we'll get our harvester out there started on it. Oops, how about we start backing this in the correct direction? This is, I just realized this is not the space I usually put this. It doesn't matter. I want to get... Ah, that's good enough, because I gotta, we got to get to work here. Do we need this for anything? Yeah, possibly. Whoops. I was in a bit of a hurry to put that away. I'm thinking of all the things that we have to do. Let's put this in the machine shed for the moment, because we're going to grab the 9RX out, get the field bin in place, and get the harvester out there and get that to work. 27 hectare field. So note to self, always check the acreage of a field before you agree to work on it. Now luckily, well, we have the equipment to do it, and I knew we did. I just didn't quite know the scope, and now we know the scope. It's big. Let's top this thing off with gas before we head out there. Oh, sorry, with fuel. Fuel tanks over here. Yeah, get this topped off. This guy topped off and get our wow, that is a big field i've only attack, tackled our current fields the biggest of which is right there at 18 and a half hectares this is another nine hectares on top of that so 50 percent larger than this field back here and i know how much time it takes oh i know it's a solid this will be a solid two and a half hours behind the wheel of the harvester i'm i'm guessing if we can keep the harvester moving, I think, I project, if we can keep the harvester moving, it can be a solid two hours at the harvester. If I can keep it moving, a solid two hours. And we are taking this, let's make sure I know to which gate we're taking it, to gate one. I will show you BF Green's gate. We've not been there in the far south uh, western side of the map. I've not been there yet. BF Green, wait, double check it, because there's two gates down there. Gate one. They're clearly marked. I'll take you down there and show you when we go. But now we've got to get on this. This is going to be great. Oh, yeah, we got to watch. If you haven't been here and seen me drive this thing yet, yes, watch the way you steer this field bin. It likes to hook around, and you can take out crop easily with it if you're not paying attention. It like it, because of it has seven axles, it kind of steers in the middle, and especially and you will see this thing to capacity. Once you get this thing to capacity, you start tipping towards 150 tons, and this is why I'm using the 9RX to pull it, and it will pull this tractor around and whip like crazy. Let's park this here for the moment. How are we doing in the mowing? Excellent, and let's hop in our combine. Let's grab our header and get to work with this. Oh, this is going to be fun. We have a lot of work to do in this field. It's great picking up contract work in between. As most of the stuff I'm doing right now, as you can see, I'm a bit indecisive as to what to do in the cattle farm. This will give us plenty of time to think while I'm behind the wheel of this harvester. I'll have all the time in the world to think. See, that trailer is moving all over my yard. It wasn't before, but now it is. And again, it's not a modded trailer. It's an in-game trailer. And it's the trailer that's moving, not the header, which obviously the header is a mod. The trailer is not. It just likes to move around. Let's get this unfolded and get to work. One thing I love about this header is you can see it is articulated in the middle. The header articulates in the middle and you can actually change how much it it doesn't matter how much you bend it because when you put it down, it conforms to the ground. But it's great when you have a 50, a 50 foot wide header, it's great that it conforms to the ground to avoid missed spots and, of course, obviously, things of that nature. One thing I love, yeah, here's one thing I love about America is we can just go down there. Yeah, <laughs> gotta love America. We can get down there without having to tow the header separately. Just gotta watch the road signs here. Oh, 
Well, let's take a, a road this way. I'm not sure which direction we're going to go. I just want to get to work. So let's start by going this direction. We'll see how far we can get down here before we need to unload. I'm guessing we won't make it all the way. This is a very large field. Most For most maps, this is a very large field. For this map, it is a large. These two, that one there being 50 hectares and that one being 60 hectares, those are large. This is just so, so large for this map. So let's get to going here and see how far we can get. I always love harvesting. It's one thing I prefer to do myself from the cab of my harvester or, well, it doesn't matter which view I have, but I always love to do the harvesting myself. For some reason, harvesting feels like I'm actually accomplishing something because I'm seeing all the, you know, crop that we have planted and I'm, it's more like, this may seem like an odd comparison. If I'm playing a video game like say, if I'm playing a video, say a, like a role a role playing game, right? I feel more like a melee character than a caster character because I'm actually you understand it's there's more impact to what I'm doing. It's like being a melee character. This is why I prefer playing melee characters in role playing games because I actually get to hit stuff. If, maybe you see what I'm saying, and that's what it feels like. I, so I was trying the other day. I was trying to figure out why is it. That I like harvesting better than planting and spraying. It's because it's more like being a melee character. I get to get down there and actually hit the stuff with my sword. You see the comparison? Yeah, so harvesting always feels I have a sense of accomplishment, you know, like I'm getting something done. I'm going to go ahead and set a worker on this just so we can swap to the 9RX and get down there because wherever we have to unload, we're gonna, it's going to be down there. So let's go ahead and move this guy down and watch this thing swing as we turn around. You gotta watch that you don't take out crop or you're doing it. Look at that thing swing. And with the destructible crop stalks that there are on this map, this thing will, you can't worry too much about destroying your own field, uh, the harvested crops that is, because you're gonna take out a lot of stalks. I don't think it's a really big deal. It's just, it turns it in this map because the crops stalks are destructible. It, changed the, it changes the ground status from harvested to just bare ground. Is there really much difference in that, in the field, that field state? I don't think so. And when you're talking about a field this large, does it really matter? No, it doesn't matter. We have so much yield from this field, it does not matter. It hasn't said that he's at 80% yet, which means we sh might, fingers crossed, be able to follow around and keep him moving. No, he's not going to make it. Let's hop over. Let's leave this running. Let's see exactly what we're looking at here. Are we going to make it? Yes, we're going to make it. I'll take control here and do it myself. Also, he's going to leave. If I leave it to him, he's going to leave a big pile of straw. I like to make it a little more Baylor friendly and kind of spread the straw out, the straw swath out. Well, that's the reasons why I like to control the harvester myself, and that's one of them. I try to keep, try to keep from doing mountains of straw. I'd rather have control over it myself and keep it nice for the baler. All right, now we're going to have to flip this around. All right, let's go pick this up. Now, because our field bin here holds a hundred and, whoops, 141 cubic meters, Whoops, that ensures we make as few trips as possible to unload. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna leave him some room to turn around the combine. I'm gonna take this row, this north-south row right here off the field and set him running east and west. Is that, how is the field shaped? It's pretty square, okay. I'm gonna take this north-south here, parallel with the road, out for him, so he can do rows going east-west. Would it be more efficient, though, to... Actually, wait, no, it's already, it's perfectly square field. We've already got one row taken out, so I'll just sit him going north-south, that'll be easier, because the where we're going, BF Grains, is that huge co-op silo up there on the right. 
I'm going to keep him going north-south parallel to the road, and then I'll go back and forth with this, and that seems like a plan. That seems like that's the plan, Stan. So, I, I do like to do the harvesting myself. I'm just etching out a plan for when I start going him on his own, which intermittently he will be going on his own, so I can run the grain. Because it's important we keep, on a big harvest like this, it's important to keep the harvester moving at all times. The harvester needs to be going at all times. You can see the harvester has 4.8 hours on it. That is between the three fields I have. I estimate keeping this running, I estimated about two hours, and it looks like it could be more than that around there. So let's get this going. I didn't refuel the harvester. Well, we can run some fuel out to it if we have to. Because I want to keep this going. So let's have a look at... Um, Well, I just thought, I think I left that tractor running down there. That's okay. It's got a full tank. Let's, let's have a look here at, I should have refueled this before I headed out. I think I meant to before I put it away because I thought I was putting it away for the season. Let's see here. We can buy us a fuel tank. I mean, having fields this large and a map this big, having a portable fuel tank is always a good idea. It's never not a good idea. I have a pickup truck that really doesn't serve much purpose anyway. I don't do anything with my pickup truck. So, why not get us a fuel tank? Actually, I have a good one that we can get if I can find where it's at. Here it is. I like this one. It's got John Deere colors on it. That's cool. Hey, that works. 3,000 liters. That is plenty. It can hold fuel, right? Oh, that's all it holds. Perfect. And it's already John Deere colors. Is it? Oh, it will be keep my John Deere theme here and actually let's make this tank more like tank colored yeah yeah look at that way it looks like a, like a polyurethane tank and let's get this proper John Deere color here there we go so that price is negligible all right so now we'll have a way to refill this harvester perfection now let's see how far we can I'm hoping we can make this entire row I want to trim down the north-south, so the, trim down the north the north portion of the field so that we can do north-south runs. Uh, so that, yeah, obviously I want him to turn around and be facing north before he has a full grain tank so that I can pick it up. So right now we're driving the combine to see how far we get. I don't like leaving him in charge of turning around or stopping in the middle of the field because when he stops in the middle of the field, then you have this huge pile of grain there that, I've, as I mentioned before, as we all know, the baler, well, it doesn't hang the baler up, but it leaves straw on the field, which I don't like, but this is not my field. To be fair, there is that. This is not my field, but should I take any less pride in my work? No. It looks like we're going to barely make this, so it looks like if I catch it right at the beginning, We could take another cut off the north end of the field to make sure that he can make this on a tank. But that's, it's true that if he stops in the middle of the field, it's not a huge deal. It doesn't really matter. It's not my field, but at the same time, I like to take pride in my work and leave a consistent swap of straw. But yeah, no, there's room. We've got about 9% left in the tank to turn around on and for me to catch up with the field bend. It should be good. Let's get this turned around. Yeah, 8% left in the tank. That's room to turn around, get started. As long as I'm here to meet him on every turnaround, we should be able to get this field in fairly decent time. So I can keep him running. I will take turns sitting in the harvester. I love sitting in the harvester. It's just cool. I mean... <laughs> it's, hey, it's got a passenger seat for a reason, right? People like riding in the things. So let's get this straightened out. And let's empty what we have. Where's my tractor at? I need some kind of mod to keep track of, yeah, that. I'd rather not tear up the field if I don't have to. So let's go down the road until we have room in the field and then we'll be moving down there.
So this should be able to take about nine loads, maybe. Let's see, uh, 16. This, this should take maybe eight. This may be able to fill up with eight hoppers from that harvester before we have to go down there. And I should scout that area out. I will once we get this going and see if there's room to discharge this down there. There may not be. I may have to take the semi-truck. So th that actually sounds like that could be fairly productive. While he's doing that, I could be running the semi-truck and smaller loads down there. This is going to be really hard to maneuver down there. You'll see when I go down there. Whoops. When I go down there, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. It could be a little difficult to maneuver this bin down there to dump into the gate. Ooh, we'll start turning so I don't take out dude's field there. All right, that sounds like a plan. Let's get this offloaded into here, and let's get my track set. Now, right here should be good. All right. Oh, squeeze in between here. All right. Floating barley. And, oh yeah, luckily we, oh, you know what? It's a good thing the weather forecast for today is clear. It's a good thing. Remember I said it's going to be a sunny day in July. It's good that it is because we're going to need that sun all day long to get this harvest done. All right, well, he's going down there. We're going to hop in the semi-truck. And I'm going to take you on a little tour down there. We've got these oats I need to drop off first. It's good that I spotted that. Now, this is going to be real quick because I want to catch up to him by the time he hits the end of that row. I want to empty his tank by the time he hits the end of that row. So we're going to get the truck part way. I'm going to store these oats temporarily at the train depot. Luckily, that's an option. And I want to show you why this is the truck we want to use at BF Grains. This is where, you know, even though we have very large equipment and we're making a lot of money, this is where all the tactical planning and coordination of things comes into play. Playing big farm, playing small farms is great. You get to toy around with small equipment, uh, really intricate tasks. It's like playing with miniatures. But then when you're playing with big equipment like this, you're playing on a much larger field of robotic automation everywhere. Let's pull this aside here. I don't have much time. I need to empty out that tank before he hits the end of that field. And I wish, see, I need a better way to tap through these vehicles. Wrong button. All right, let's get headed down this field. I got to empty that tank before he turns around. But once he turns around, we have a whole row before we got to be back here. And hey, if we mess up, if we miss a little bit of the timing, it's no big deal. So he stops in the middle of a track. But the idea with something like this is you want to keep everything moving because this is it. It's going to be about two hours, maybe more of solid fun, <laughs> fun in the field as we do this contract. And I love the I love having the equipment to do all of this. It feels great here. This is worth setting our cruise control down. Let's we'll set our cruise control down. And set our truck back. And okay. This is because we'll be on this field for a while, so it's worth setting the cruise. And we can ease it down just a little bit. There we go. This is worth setting the cruise for because we're going to be on this field for a while. Okay, still emptying the grain tank. This is where everything comes into fun. I'm not actually doing the harvesting, but it kind of, I have the same amount of fun because I'm the one, one here following her along with them as he does it, as the worker does it. Okay, so we got the grain tank emptied. Just in time for him to turn around. Then I crash over that big row of straw. All right.
We're going to leave him and get back to the truck. Let's head down to BF Grains. Big friggin' Grains, maybe. Once these cars get out of the way. Come on, car. Well, first... Again, yeah, if he stops in the middle of the track there, it's not the end of the world. We know that we have enough room for him to run a full row coming south before he turns around. So he, he won't have to stop going south. That's true. As long as I keep him emptied up at the north, I won't have to worry about flipping the combine around and emptying it. That's what I don't like. We, that won't be an issue. So First, let's empty this here. And I'll show you BF Grains and why this is going to be the better candidate to empty here than the field bin. I don't think it'll have room to maneuver there. Nor does it here. This is why I have this as well. We have to use this to empty here. Because there's no way that that big bin is getting in here and emptying, obviously. But we'll store this as a railroad silo for now. Please take all of it. Please, please take all of it. Okay, it did. Because there's already green in there, and there's a 500,000 liter capacity here. All right, now let's see if we can get turned around. There should be room. Let's see if we can get turned around to BF Grains, which is behind us. Over at the co-op here. Our local grain co-op. This truck will hold 70,000 liters, roughly half of what the field bin holds, which I guess you can pretty much guess, it's about half the size. And now you're gonna see why we're running this truck back and forth. Well, first of all, I can keep the tractor on the field, keep its cruise control set at six miles an hour. Yeah, although I could use the field bin here. Actually, see, if I pulled into lane two, I could empty into lane one. I wasn't sure, but actually I could bring the field bin down here and empty into into lane one from lane two, but we'll keep the tractor on the field, keep its cruise control set at six miles an hour. And where is our harvester at? It's coming down. All right, we'll make it in time. Actually, let's go ahead and swap now because I gotta turn this guy around. I gotta turn this around. I gotta use the road again until we get further into the field because this has such a wide berth. He may stop at the end, but at least he'll be facing this way. We'll be able to unload. Oh, it looks like we might catch up to him right before he's ready. Because if he stops, then I got to switch cabs and start him again and everything. Whoa. Oh, I barely missed that field. I'm trying to catch up to our combine here. Whoa. Talk about coordination perfection just in time that is like a ballet on the fields yeah excellent and we'll just follow him up this row or we can stop and catch up to him but as long as we're with him at the end and we're gonna want our auger out here so that we can come by with the semi. I love how it has this digital readout on the side. Well, I mean, they do in real life as well, you know. It's kind of cool. I wonder if we can see it from the cab. Can we see it in the mirror? No, the mirror is not quite pointed at it. Yeah, you know, I said it was going to be all in for this field to get this field done in time. And yeah, it's going to be, in fact, I might want to slow time down a bit. This is one of those times when, yeah, that's going to be necessary. I'll do that once I have a moment here. Right now, I need to catch up to this. Normally, you would haul the field bin over to the truck to empty, but we're pressed on time and things of that nature. What the heck? Am I not over far enough? Well, that's something I don't have time to bother with right now. We gotta get this moving again. Don't have time to worry about that. We have to empty that tank before he hits the end of the row.
And that is the biggest green tank you can have. Well, unless you have a mod combine that has more. That's an in-game combine. There are mod combines that have hoppers much larger, but this is the biggest one in the game. Basically, this one or the Lexion, one of the two, but it's a big field, so it fills up. Let's get this emptied, and then we'll transfer some to the truck. It's going to keep us busy, that is for sure. All right. Whoops, I need this running so I can... Didn't have the truck close enough last time. I didn't... Uh, yeah. This auger is very vertical. Very short, or however you want to put it. Is us with a full shut the truck down here that's us with a full tank on the truck making quick work of it speaking of time because we're gonna need it it, it looks it, it looks like oh this will be fine but this is gonna carry over so speaking of which guys thanks so much for joining me this episode next episode well can you take a guess Next episode is finishing the contract. Guys, thanks so much for following along. Be sure to like, and if you like the video, if you like what I'm doing here, be sure to leave a like, and definitely leave a comment below with what you think, what you want to see. And I am recording these ahead of time, but I will try to get to work in things that we can. So for right now, I'll be back in the next episode where we'll get caught up with everything going on in the farm and then continue on with this. Uh, we would likely, we will likely be finishing this in the next episode. I'd like to see you there. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one.